If you want to level up your life and unlock the hottest, highest, and healthiest version of yourself, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to today's episode of Hot and Unbothered. Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back to my podcast. If you are new here, my name is Brianna Gomez, and I am your host of Hot and Unbothered, the ultimate podcast for all things it girl, for the girls who want to unlock their highest selves to achieve magnetic energy, their dream lives, all of it. We're here for all of it. If that sounds like you, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit the follow button, follow the podcast, subscribe to us on YouTube, Spotify, whatever you're listening on to lock in and fully affirm that you are committing to achieving the healthy version of you. With Summer Among Us, I feel like it is the perfect time to really focus on your glow up. You can glow up any time of the year, 24-7, but I think summer is the perfect time to implement healthy habits, to start really cracking down and focusing on who you want to be, what kind of life you want to live, and what you are going to do to achieve those things. And since it's summertime for most people, you know, maybe that means your schedule's looking a little more open. Maybe you have more flexibility in your day-to-day, you know, less school, less work. Hopefully you're getting a break in some way, shape, or form. Or, you know, maybe you're still hustling, you're still grinding. Either way, it's really important to instill healthy habits into us when we're not crazy busy. And if you are crazy busy, we're going to find easy ways to start kind of like sprinkle sprinkling in some little healthy habits that in the long run are going to make you unrecognizable. So if you're going back to work or school at the end of summer, these are habits that if you start implementing now, you will over time be unrecognizable recognizable. These are habits that day to day, they might not feel like they're like, oh, make or break, gonna make the biggest change because Rome was not built in a day, you guys. It takes some time to implement things. The definition of habits are things that you do on a regular day basis and not something that you're gonna just do and like, poof, fairy godmother, you're a new person. That's not how it works, unfortunately. But today I'm gonna share with you habits that are literally things that I swear by, things that I know other people who are very successful or very beautiful or healthy swear by, and just little changes that you can actually start today. You know, I'm not going to be like, uh, go get a thousand dollar gym membership, hit the gym four times a week, and then you'll be good. Like, that's not realistic for everyone. And maybe not everything I say on this list is going to be the easiest for you to implement. You might not have the supplies at home, but I am making this as general as possible to apply to as many people as possible and easy things that pretty much everybody should be able to start today. Because when you set goals that are super far-fetched, it seems really far away and unattainable. But if you set easy goals and easy habits to start implementing little by little, it will encourage you and keep you motivated to keep going and fulfilling and accomplishing even more goals and habits. Before we dive into today's episode, you guys know I love to share a podcast review. Let's see who we have today. Don't forget to leave a review on this episode for the chance to be featured in next week's episode. Today, I'm sharing a review from Sylvie. She said, your podcast has literally helped me so much. You've changed my mindset and made it easy to build new habits. Often, other creators will be super broad, but you've made my goals actually achievable. You've turned around my life, and I'm so grateful to have you motivating me. Hope you get the recognition you deserve soon. That's so sweet. I can't believe that I'm like making a difference in people's lives. Mind blowing, mind blowing, mind blowing. But anyway, that's her testimony. Get ready for yours. Seriously, listening ears on, I know you might have been zoning out and hiding in the comments or distracting yourself from things that I was just saying, but like tap in, tap in, listening ears on. We're getting into it. Get your notebook, get your notes app, start journaling, make mental notes. These are things that you actually want to implement. So please do me a favor, like take notes, screenshot this, screen record it, whatever you need to do, but don't just like listen to this and then be like, oh cool, and not implement any of it. Like you actually have to do these things if you want to become unrecognizable. Like I'm giving you the recipe, but are you going to cook? Okay, I have a lot of things to say. Let's start with the basics, having a maintenance routine for yourself. When I say maintenance routine, you might instantly think expensive. You might think, oh, that means I have to get my hair cut every three months. That means I have to get my nails done every week. Not necessarily. If you have the means 
Of course, do those things. But when I say maintenance routine, I mean decide what is your main focus that you really want to prioritize when it comes to your beauty, appearance, maintenance. So for some people, that means hair. Some people get their hair done way more often. I feel like especially if you're blonde or you have colored hair, maybe that means touching it up way more often. Um, if you like getting your nails done, get your nails done. I got mine done today and I was thinking like nails for me are a necessity in my maintenance routine. And I know nails can be expensive, so I don't mean you have to go spend $100 on a set of nails, but maybe start looking into press-on nails. Maybe for you that's doing your nails at home, not even necessarily like painting them, but even just like giving them a good file, like buff, some nail oil, even if you do a natural nail, like really keep it up kept because I think your hands make the biggest biggest confidence. I don't know, even like my boyfriend said, like something that he like always noticed about me was my hands and then I had pretty hands. And I think that's something that makes me feel so like feminine and pretty is when my nails are done. And again, I don't mean you have to spend hundreds of dollars to get a fresh set of Gel X manicure. Learn to do your nails at home. Press on nails are so cheap and literally reusable if you just have a good nail glue. So think about that. You could add that to your maintenance routine. Maybe for you, it's eyebrows. Personally, I don't like to pay to get my eyebrows done. That's why they're a little uneven at times but you know eyebrows maybe that's an important thing for you maybe you're a waxing girly maybe you are a threading girly maybe you get eyelash extensions maybe you get lip filler or lip blushing figure out what it is that you want to do in your maintenance routine but the word on the street is you have to be high maintenance in order to be low maintenance and by that it means doing things in your maintenance routine so for example lasering i got laser hair removal and i do also at home laser hair removal i'm planning on doing a self-care routine and showing you guys how i do that if you're interested in that but i like laser hair removal literally yes it's expensive sometimes and it's painful but it literally changed my life to not have to deal with razor burn or anything like that or if you're an eyelash extensions girly personally i'm not but i know that makes their lives easier on a daily basis because they don't have to put on mascara. How easy and convenient is that? Like, are you joking? That sounds like a literal dream. Or even if for you that means either getting a blowout or a keratin treatment or giving yourself like a blowout at the beginning of the week so that your hair is looking less frizzy and more smooth for the rest of the week and making your life easier so you don't have to style it every single day. So think of the little things that you're going to put in the work for to over time make things easier. I don't know, that's just like a little thing and I feel like having some things that you do for regular maintenance really makes you look more upkept, more put together and it makes the biggest difference in your confidence. A huge thing I wanna touch on is trying to heal your gut, not just to be less bloated and look skinnier or whatever. Like it's not even about that, but it's about how it makes you feel internally. Personally, like if you're having tummy issues all day, 24 seven, if you're feeling like your skin or your hormones or your confidence or anything is being affected by what you are eating, I really want you to take a look at what you're eating. And honestly, like I am not a limiter. I don't like to deprive myself of things, but I do like to eat intuitively. And one thing for sure is you need to eat breakfast every single morning and try to eat it within the first 30 minutes of waking up. That's going to kickstart your metabolism for the day and at a good rate because the longer you prolong your first meal of the day, the more prone to bloating and a slow metabolism you will be. That's also going to just help balance your hormones and your blood sugar for the day, everything like that. I call it the 30-30 rule, trying to eat 30 grams of protein within the first 30 minutes of waking up. Protein is so important. I don't know, if you're vegetarian, I don't judge you, but I'm just saying try to get your protein in in some way, shape, perform because it is so crucial to your muscles and your body and your hormone levels, everything like that. Like protein, I feel like is underrated by some people, but the more I learned about the body and wellness, the more I realized like protein is so important. People recommend trying to hit your body weight in grams of protein a day. So if you weigh 130 pounds, that's 130 grams of protein a day. It is tricky, but trying to also learn how to make high protein meals at home is super helpful. That's another tip I have, just eating at home. Eating at home, cooking at home more, not necessarily, again, because eating out is even just like unhealthy. I don't want you to not enjoy yourself. Like obviously treat yourself every now and then. But if you're eating every single meal out, you don't know what's going into it. So like you don't know what kinds of oils they're using or what kind of processed things. You don't know if it's frozen and gross or expired. Like you have no idea how that's being handled because you're not seeing it. But there's something about like just bringing your food straight from your kitchen to your table and to your mouth. <laughs> but just like knowing exactly what ingredients are going into it. One, 
that's gonna save you money. Two, you're learning a skill. You're learning how to cook. And I think it's very good for like the mind. Very therapeutic actually to cook and also rewarding to cook something and then get to eat it. It's obviously way better for you and you're gonna save a ton of money. Obviously it's okay to eat out, but the more you start eating at home, literally I promise you will see a difference in your body and the way you glow because you're just gonna be eating so much cleaner without even having to try. First thing in the morning also what you're gonna do. First, before you do anything, you're gonna do a spoonful of coconut oil in your mouth, five, 10, 15 minutes, swish it around, oil pulling. Yes, I'm putting you on. Your gum health is so important. Also, going to the dentist is so fucking expensive. I had to get a root canal. That shit was thousands and thousands of dollars. Like, don't do it. Take care of your mouth floss, brush your teeth. I'm kind of a hypocrite because flossing is so hard for me to remember to do, but like oil pulling, seriously, it's really good for your oral hygiene as well as tongue scraping. I know you've probably heard that one, tongue scraping. You don't want bad breath. Oh, oh my God. If you are walking around with bad breath and you're talking to somebody, like just imagine the secondhand embarrassment. Oh, so bad. Like don't even risk it, guys. Oil pulling, tongue scraping, brush your goddamn teeth. Spit that in the trash can also. You do not want to spit your oil pulling out into the sink. That'll clog your drains. Don't do that. Spit it into the trash can and then brush your teeth and then we're gonna go in with some apple cider vinegar water concoction. So I mix this, I dilute it with water because you don't want it to be too acidic. That's bad for the enamel of your teeth as well. And I drink it through a paper straw. What works best for me is filling a glass with half a tablespoon of lemon juice, half a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, filling the rest with water and then honey. And I drink it hot, drinking a hot drink in the morning. And I don't mean coffee. I don't mean coffee, but apple cider vinegar is so good for your metabolism. It helps with bloating. It helps with indigestion. Very, very good for you. I noticed a difference in my skin and honestly, like how my body and my gut feels throughout the day. Bone broth is super good. I tried it and a lot of people said that they were concerned about the taste. I had no issue with the taste and that is also very good for one protein and then healing your gut. So, so good. Coffee does not count as your meal of the day. I don't drink caffeine. I'm not saying you can't drink caffeine, but I'm saying that's something that I've never never really done and I never plan on doing it. That's something that I pride myself on is I don't have like an addiction to caffeine because it actually is not very good for you. Obviously energy drinks and stuff have sugar but your body when it becomes so reliant on caffeine, caffeine can also throw off your hormone and your cortisol levels. I'm not saying cut it out completely but you know if you're drinking six cups a day maybe cut that in half at least. Again everything's in moderation so I'm not saying you can never do it. I want you to enjoy yourself and have the yummy drinks and foods that you like but you know all in moderation and it's not the best for you try substituting for a green tea or an adrenal cocktail adrenal cocktails are essentially look it up go on tiktok and look up adrenal cocktail recipes i personally i've never made like a super food like packed one just because i haven't made it to the grocery store recently but they are essentially little mocktails but they are made out of just like ingredients that are so so good for you and your skin that will make you glow that will feel so good for your gut Gut and for your health and yeah I really want to try them so I recommend you try it too but again if you can't do it, at least just that try replacing your caffeine with some apple cider vinegar water something like that just to make you feel a little healthier I also like having a smoothie with chia seeds every day you have to soak your chia seeds if you just throw them in there they're probably not doing too much um but yeah I love chia seeds also very good for digestion and bloating and just your overall gut health also sneak some protein into everything so I sneak some greek yogurt into there I sneak some foods I don't like into my smoothie to get some protein to get some extra health benefits this video is not meant to be entirely health based but I promise if you just make these little switches in literally your diet you will see a huge difference I'm not an expert on this so I'm not gonna say too much but even like mushroom coffee a lot of people like doing like um, some sort of ashwagandha powder um, and they'd make it into really yummy matchas things like that there are so many different substitutes for just plain straight coffee and that will actually have health benefits for you for your mind I know ashwagandha or certain mushrooms are very good for your brain and your stress levels and your thinking if you're trying to grow your hair and also help your gut look into colostrum I tried the armor one you just put one to two scoops into water or anything daily swish it around in your mouth I just dry scooped it and you will
will notice a difference. Also, looking into different supplements for what you need help with. I was struggling with sleep. I'm not a melatonin girl. I do not like the way it makes me feel. Instead, I take magnesium glycinate. I find that really helps me before bed, and it also has so many other benefits, and it's good for your muscle growth. Also, I take a vitamin B complex, especially if you've been on birth control in any point in time in your life. Highly recommend taking a vitamin B complex. That, for me, is super important. When you take birth control, you are depleting the vitamin vitamin the vitamin b out of your body that's another change i didn't mean to mention in this video of how to change your life how to become unrecognizable get off the birth control we'll get into that in a different episode just do it birth control actually ruined my life i'll talk about that a different time because that's not what this episode's about drinking a gallon of water a day you guys know my good trusty water bottle i'll always have it linked for you guys i have a half gallon water bottle one having a cute one really helps and then i feel like as humans we literally just drink however much water is in front of our face so i like to put a half gallon in front of my face and then I drink two of them a day and I use a glass one because you don't have to worry about any like microplastics, BPAs, things like that. Drinking a gallon of water a day, like I don't even know how much I need to explain how good it makes you feel in your mood, in your mind, in your gut, in your overall health. Your skin will be glowing. Guys, water fixes everything, I swear. Water literally just fixes everything. I don't know what's in this stuff. Our bodies and our cells are literally just made of water. Like, of course we need it. I'm drinking water as we speak. Something that I think would be really good if you really wanted to go the extra mile in healing your body would be to see a nutritionist. I know not everyone has access to that and I know it could be expensive. I haven't even done that yet, but if you have the means and if you are really dedicated to figuring your body out and really trying to make a change and you wanna feel good, you could always see a nutritionist or just kind of do trial and error. Try eliminating gluten, try eliminating dairy if you have like some gut issues, seeing what works for you. But I find just trying to eat as clean as possible, which I don't always do, okay? I fall down the slippery slope of in and out and milkshakes and everything. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I follow this all the time. But when I'm on top of my stuff, I am trying to cook at home more often just so I know what's going into my food and my body. All right, I'm gonna mention it, guys habit stacking. So you might be wondering, how do I implement these said habits? Because you could keep watching this video and I could keep telling you all the things that you're going to do to make your life different, but it's up to you whether or not you're going to implement them. And new habits can be very tricky to stick to. If you haven't read Atomic Habits, you should definitely go read it, but they talk about something called habit stacking. I've talked about this in like two other episodes, but it basically says the way to implement a new habit is by stacking it with a habit that you already do every day. So if you're trying to hit, for example, that gallon of water intake a day, but you are just addicted to your coffee, every morning before you drink your coffee, now stack the habit with it that you have to drink a glass of water every day as well before you're allowed to drink your coffee. So now by habit, by nature, your body knows that it wants coffee first thing in the morning, but you set out your glass of water right next to your coffee cup. You make sure that you need to make yourself drink that glass of water before you're allowed to drink the coffee. So they go hand in hand. They work kind of in unison. So yes, you're still drinking the coffee. You're doing something that you do every day, but you're also adding a new healthy habit of drinking water on top of it. Same thing goes for making your bed. Maybe you go on your phone every single morning. That's what a lot of us do just without even fail, without even thinking about it. But what if before you let yourself even check your phone in the morning, you make yourself get up, open your blinds and make your bed. That is a huge one. Please, and this counts as a tip that I want to share with you. Please, please, please open your blinds and make your bed and see the light of day before going on your phone. When your phone is the first thing you see in the morning and you're just like straight on social media, you are messing up your like serotonin levels for the day. You're messing up everything. You're messing up your circadian rhythm. Like just wait, your phone will be there, baby. There is no need to rush and check your phone first thing. You know, you can take a glance at it, see if you missed any important emergency texts or calls, but especially social media. And just like when I would go on my phone every single day first thing in the morning, I would end up staying in bed for hours. Like, get up, go do something, check your phone then. Speaking of phones, a fun little thing that I always like to tell you guys and what literally works for me so well is to start scrolling. Okay, because if you're going to doom scroll, I can't stop you. I cannot stop you from doom scrolling. I can hardly even stop myself, but you can multitask while doom scrolling. So instead of just doom scrolling in bed, hop on the treadmill, 
get moving, start stretching, and scroll through something while you do that. Literally the amount of times I've accidentally walked hours just because I was on my phone while I was walking and I like to be productive also I like to edit I actually prefer now editing on my phone so that I could take it with me like on a walk or even on the Stairmaster or I used to do this thing when I did the Stairmaster I had a show like my favorite show that I was binge watching I think it was One Tree Hill and I only let myself watch it when I was at the gym like that was my Stairmaster show if I wanted to watch it I had to get on the Stairmaster so that way one you are like dissociated when you're on the Stairmaster you don't even realize that the time is flying by but you're actually getting a workout in and then also your brain is kind of tricking itself into thinking like you can only watch the show if you do this action with it and then you also become more used to it it becomes more of a habit and it also feels like a reward system at the same time like yes you're doing something a little less productive like watching a show but then you're also being very productive for your body so I think they go hand in hand a huge tip I have when it comes to fitness is literally to just show up stop trying to be a perfectionist and stop trying to be like well I have to hit the gym four days a week and follow a certain split and eat this certain diet when you do that you're gonna upset yourself when you miss your goal so yes having discipline is so important I have an entire episode on staying disciplined I think that is a huge aspect of life and success and seeing results but it's also very important to find a balance and to be flexible patient and gentle with yourself so honestly just start showing up to the gym even if I don't feel like lifting a ton of weight literally Literally, like if I show up and just stretch and do a five minute ab workout or maybe like walk around for a little bit, that counts. I showed up, I moved my body and I know I won't be falling backwards. I know I am keeping myself and my health maintained instead of falling back. So just start moving your body in some way and find a way to move your body that you truly do enjoy. I say this every time, but you know, having a hobby is so important and especially that being a hobby that is good for you. So whether that's dancing, that is a great workout and it's so cool to learn how to dance or yoga or Pilates, running, walking, hiking, walking a dog. You can become a dog walker life hack become a dog walker get paid to do it spend time with puppies all day that must be great for your mental health and also get your steps in getting your steps in i'm not gonna say you have to hit 10,000 every day i think the sweet spot is trying to get anywhere between 5 to 10,000 but just do what works for you and then start taking the more active options so if you have the option to take a two minute drive or an eight minute walk like walk eight minutes. Or, you know, if there's the elevator or the stairs, take the stairs. Just like making those little tweaks in your day will really help get your steps in a little more. And it'll add up over time and it'll definitely make the difference. But walking is seriously so good for you. Again, it's great for your cortisol levels. Actually, super intense workouts are technically not that great for your cortisol levels. I think walking is so important. It gives me a great sense of mindfulness. Just like turn off my phone and just walk also. But then again, if you struggle with that, Having that be your excuse to like be when you're going to go on your phone or watch your favorite show, it's a great trick for the mind. I highly suggest you try it. Just getting some type of movement in daily is very important. Our bodies as humans are meant to move. We aren't meant to bed rot all day. We just aren't. That's not what we're designed for. That's why when you lay in bed all day, you feel like shit. But when you move your body, you literally feel great and so liberated and so alive. That's literally why. And while we're on kind of the topic of media... Your media intake is so, so crucial. So obviously, like, do a cleanse. Uh, please do me a favor and set screen time reminders on your phone. Please. I also have an alarm that goes off on my phone every single night that tells me to get off my phone. Even if I don't listen to it, at least I know it's there. But then, like, screen time controls... Please, like, if you go, do me a favor, go look at your screen time and just look at how much of your time you have wasted on social media. Yeah, that hurts. That hurts to look at. There are a trillion other things you could be doing instead of social media. I'm not saying never go on social media, but when you do, what you are intaking is actually very important in how it's affecting your subconscious. So when we are scrolling through social media and we are constantly comparing ourselves or seeing, like, negative drama and gossip, like, you don't need that. Please do me a favor do a regular social media cleanse unfollow people or at least mute people and just really make sure what you're seeing on your screen is stuff that is motivating you follow you know people who post nice recipes who post motivational content who post inspirational podcasts like hot and unbothered you know things like that your media intake is so so crucial I'm not saying don't look at any media but I'm saying maybe try 
opting for things that are inspiring rather than like revolting. Also subliminals. If you don't know what subliminals are, they're basically things that play in the background with intention. So like if you go on Spotify and you look up subliminals, you'll find like pretty girl subliminals, healthy girl subliminals, things like that. They can be really oddly specific. Those are things with set intentions that play in the background that are supposed to make you feel good and like manifest in your life without even trying because the things that you hear in the background actually do make a difference, which is why I try to limit sad music. I love me some Taylor Swift. I love me some Lana. I love all that. I love sad music sometimes, but I used to listen to sad music way too often where I was just making myself cry at that point. I was making myself upset over things that did not even happen so try not to listen to sad music every single day you know give yourself a couple days throughout the week to feel to feel that especially during that time of the month like let it out but if you're listening to sad music 24 7 fact is you're going to be sad so try your best to make some happy playlists make a dream life playlist dream girl playlist make a getting ready playlist make a morning playlist but the playlists they're so important if you're listening to sad emo music all the time you're gonna feel like that you know i love playing spotify's good mood mix that they literally like make for you i think that is so fun and i force myself to like be happy and like on the way to work like if i'm doing something that i don't even particularly enjoy like at least kind of hype yourself up before you go in the car if you're not listening to a podcast or an audiobook or something that is gonna like help you gain knowledge and insight at least listen to some happy music to get your mood up something that i learned and i think is so so smart is called energy checks. So it's very easy throughout the day, especially when you're tired or you're grouchy or you're having like a long day at work or school. It's very easy to find yourself swooping back down into a negative state. I saw someone have this idea and I think it's brilliant to do energy checks. So literally you set a reminder like randomly on your phone. It could be a random time every day to literally say just like energy check like every day at like 3 p.m energy check because I feel like that's when my energy starts getting low and I'll find myself being negative and thinking of the things that are wrong and then like your energy check goes off and you're like okay wait let me recollect myself let's recoup and let's think of three things that we're grateful for say I'm at work and I'm grumpy I just dealt with a mean customer and I'm tired and I want to go home and the shift's long and my head hurts but then I get an energy check well, let's stop and think. I really like my outfit today. I am grateful to have a job at all. And this is going towards money and something that I'm really going to need and appreciate. Realizing that there is good in everything and just adjusting your mindset is so crucial in how you live your day-to-day -day life. And that makes you 10 times more magnetic. Having magnetic energy is literally about your vibe and your perspective and literally like the energy that you are exuding into the universe. So you need to keep your energy in check. If you want to be an it girl and have magnetic energy, and other people to feel drawn to you, you have to turn that switch on in yourself and make sure you're keeping your energy in check and keeping your good vibes. Again, like I said, like having podcasts playing in the background when you're driving or doing things, like making use out of your time. So even if you're stuck in traffic, like turn it into a thing. Like spend those 20 minutes listening to a podcast, learning something new. Always be learning. Learning is so crucial. If you don't like to read, audiobooks are great. Journaling is important. If you don't journal, please start like at least once a week. The five minute journal, not sponsored, but I highly recommend you give it a try if you struggle with like getting your thoughts deep. You would also look up like beginner journal prompts. There are great ones. Shadow work is another huge thing, but that's a deeper perspective if you're trying to like do that. But overall, journaling in general, just like take five minutes every night to write about your day and also to write positive affirmations every single morning. Like any kind of journaling is good for you. Even if you don't feel like you're getting anywhere and you don't know what to write about, it's really important to kind of be making that body-mind connection and feeling connected to yourself. It's important that we nurture the relationship that we have with ourselves and kind of check in with ourselves. And I feel like one of the easiest ways to accomplish that is through journaling. A few more appearance-based things, but that make the hugest difference in literally how you are perceived and becoming unrecognizable is stop wearing clothes that don't fit you. 
stop wearing clothes that don't fit you because if you want to be an it girl like I feel like you need to really do the wardrobe clean out work on having like a capsule wardrobe like you don't need to have five billion things in your closet like and wear a different outfit every single day but literally just have like your staple items like your favorite 10 pieces in your closet tops and bottoms that you just love and you know look good on you and I think that makes it look so much more effortlessly chic and so do some trial and error figure out what looks good on you you can sell the rest of the things in your closet make an extra buck also but really going through and figuring out what styles you like and what you're into and what looks the best on you makes the biggest difference while we're on the topic of clothing though really quickly I just want to make sure you guys know in case you haven't heard my clothing line just dropped it's a capsule clothing collection and I started with this beautiful pink halter top and a matching pink mini skirt with built-in shorts the halter actually ties in the bow but it also ties in the front like in a super cute scarf like this I don't know if you could see the lace that I chose I designed this this was all made by hand sustainably made to order in New York and Brooklyn it's all limited stock so if you guys want to go support me and the family company that helped make it you can do that I'll leave the link for you and yeah I'm super excited again this is all sustainable completely size inclusive so just wanted to let you guys know if you're looking for cute clothes to add to your capsule wardrobe this is all meant to be sustainable last a long time and just be a really cute staple in your closet it's so cute to mix and match with everything so yeah just in case. All right, another thing you could do to become unrecognizable is lymphatic drainage massage. You can do this yourself. There are specific ways to do this. I can also show this in my self-care routine if you guys are interested in, but look it up on TikTok. It's so easy. There's tutorials. You can massage with your hands. You don't need a gua sha. You could absolutely do that if you prefer having the tools, but you literally just massage your face. It takes just a few minutes when you're doing your skincare routine in the morning or the night, and it helps you look literally just more snatched it helps with the blood flow throughout your system i've actually gotten once a professional lymphatic drainage massage which is so game changer it instantly made my stomach flatter and you can literally feel the toxins leaving your body it's literally like a detox massage it's like a certain technique the lymphatic drainage massage and they literally remove the toxins from your body and like from your bloodstream and you could feel them leaving it's actually insane another way is dry brushing i really like dry brushing not only just for exfoliating but there's a certain way you do it you brush towards your heart actually helps with your blood flow and the stimulation and that also helps for lymphatic drainage lash serums are huge i used to have little tiny nubs for eyelashes i use babe lash i know some people like grande lash i don't know personally i've always been a babe lash girl that was like my first big purchase i bought literally when i was in sixth grade and my eyelashes looked like they were on steroids that's not even exaggeration like I'll show a picture literally they were up to my eyebrows and people would ask if I was wearing falsies and I was too like I think I would lie because I literally went from having no eyelashes to having like these big like long eyelashes um yeah I don't even use a lash serum every day because now I'm like happy with the length that they're at but like you can get them long and then again that's another thing that makes you more low maintenance because I never wear fake eyelashes ever because I'm happy with the length you could also start doing teeth whitening having white teeth I feel like really helps with your confidence I just use a whitening toothpaste you can also use a mouthwash I feel like that works pretty well I think training your hair for washes guys guys I haven't washed my hair in a week okay you can train your hair to not need to be washed as much and that literally changes my life because actually when you're washing your hair every single day that's not good for your hair you are drying it out obviously if you go from washing your hair every single day to not washing it at all it's gonna look oily as heck but honestly like mine is fine and I could honestly probably go another day try kind of weaning yourself off of washing your hair all the time and then like obviously if it's dirty I'm gonna wash it but if it's not looking dirty like it's actually one saves you a ton on products but two way better for your hair way way better saves you so much time and I feel like my hair has grown so much more since washing it less I also found that just like embracing natural or doing heatless hairstyles is very very beneficial just in the long-term health of your hair and same thing with makeup embracing natural I love doing a lip sleeping mask as a regular gloss the Laneige one Mwah. perfect but lip masks so good like just having baby smooth lips such a game changer but just following an overall morning and night routine is so so important and like getting your body used to doing things and building healthy habits so even if it's just you know 
putting in the extra time to take off your makeup and brush your teeth and, you know, journal for two minutes before bed. That counts for something. And it really helps with also your confidence, just knowing that you're doing something for yourself and your self-care is really huge and really beneficial to your mental and your physical health. And if you just keep up with your self-care routines morning and night over time, I promise you will see a difference in your appearance and also the way that you feel. And take the extra five minutes if you need it every morning to have some time to yourself, to make sure you feel confident and you really are taking the time to wake up and feel good like that's so worth it to put in the extra five minutes of effort just to like connect with yourself and do something for yourself following a planner is huge if you don't follow any kind of planner please keep track in some way shape or form I'm not expecting you to have like the most organized like year-long planner but put things in your calendar put things in your reminders app I like a physical planner as well I like to color code it I like to check off boxes it like takes tickles my brain every time I get to check something off and it makes you feel so much more satisfied and then it literally motivates you to get more done. So whether you do it in your phone or on paper, try doing a planner or a to-do list of some sort. Helps you feel so much more organized and get way more done. Getting sleep, you guys. And this one, I'm a hypocrite. This one, I'm a hypocrite. I can't even get mad at you guys about this one, but getting eight hours of sleep a night, so important. At least seven get off your phone and get in bed. Like sleep, your body seriously needs it. It affects your mood. It affects your cortisol levels. It affects your hormones. It affects your health. Like one, your body, say you're working out and you're going ham in the gym and you just want to look good. If you never prioritize rest and recovery, you will see zero results. Prioritizing rest and recovery is just as important as working hard in the gym or with your workouts, whatever you're doing. Rest and recovery is just as important. So you really need to make sure you're prioritizing that. A huge thing that helps me with not restricting my diet but eating intuitively is stop eating in bed. I used to bring my food to my bed every single time and I would turn on a show and I would just want to put as much food on my plate as possible just so that I could like have something to eat while I was in bed, which there's nothing wrong with that every once in a while, but every single time I was eating, like that was kind of excessive. And then also just viewing food as fuel. You know, think of your body as a car and food as the gas you put into it. Of course, you want to put the most high quality stuff in so that your body can run its best. Getting outside is so important also like just stepping into the sunlight obviously use some sunscreen if it's the middle of the day but you don't even have to like go like peak uv 10 but even like going out for a little sunset walk connecting in the sunlight and with nature is so important again for your circadian rhythm for your body and for your happiness for the vitamin d for your mental health you will never regret getting in some sunshine as long as you put on sunscreen when it comes to social media we truly do become what we consume so if you're seeing a bunch of negativity and a bunch of drama and a bunch of brain rot like you're going to start thinking like that. It's going to start sneaking into your vocabulary. But if you are constantly consuming positive content, you know, gym tips, motivational quotes, positive affirmations, happy music, like you will become that. And wouldn't you so much rather be that? And I want you guys to start tracking things. Track your cycle. Cycle syncing is so game changer. And knowing what point you are in time of your cycle and learning the different phases. So we have different phases. We have follicular phase, ovulation, luteal phase, and your menstrual cycle. Um, all of those, you literally are going to feel differently. Your mood's going to be different. Your energy levels are going to be different. I could do a whole episode about this stuff, but I find it so interesting. And lately, I've really taken the extra step to to learn more about how you should be working out and resting during these different phases because there are times when you should be not working out like hardly at all and then times when like you should take advantage of that and start working out harder and getting more done and being more productive like we literally have a phase where we feel more hot and flirty and sexy how crazy tracking that is also huge a lot of people I know the aura ring is super popular um I like the flow app it's free and you can just track your cycle even iphone has the health app you can track it on there but flow will tell you a little bit more about like how you're feeling and why you're feeling the way you are like there will be a time when I'm feeling so emotional and crazy and crying for no reason and obsessive and overthinking and then I'm like wait I'm just in my luteal phase you know so it helps me to really gauge what cycle I'm in and it helps me figure out like oh 
that makes more sense why I'm feeling crazy. And then again, also tracking your sleep, how much sleep you're getting every night. I think that's super important. Keeping a habit tracker is huge. What mine looks like is it has like the month and then it has the number of days of the month and then each habit I want to fulfill. So I'll have, you know, drinking a gallon of water. I'll have working out, you know, getting my steps in, getting eight hours of sleep. And then you put a dot or a sticker or something, a happy face for each day that you do it. And it's literally like, oh my gosh, gold star. Every single time you accomplish something and it does make you want to accomplish even more. And I feel like it is that little like trick in your brain that makes us want to keep accomplishing our habits. Overall though, I want you guys to start setting the vibes of an it girl. I want you to start living your life the way your dream self would because the only thing standing between you right now and your dream self is you. Like it's literally you. You are the only thing keeping you from them. So I just need you to help bridge that gap by being on the same energetic level of where you want to be. So do things every day that your dream self would do. Would your dream self be bed rotting all day? Would they be doom scrolling? Most likely not. Would they be drinking their gallon of water a day, being super productive, getting their errands done, having an early start to their day? Probably. So don't listen to the sad music. Don't sulk in bed. Check your energy. That brings us back to the energy check. Like you need to energetically and vibrationally put yourself on the same level as your dream self. And that can come from manifesting. That can come from gratitude. Say your gratitude every single day for things you don't even have. I'm so grateful that I have a million subscribers on YouTube, a million listeners to my podcast. Do I have that yet? No, but I am going to believe that I do because I know that one day that is going to be mine. And I'm so grateful for the day that that happens. And I'm owning that and I am claiming it right now. Practicing gratitude is probably the most beneficial thing for your magnetic energy and for manifesting your dream life and for bridging that gap between the present and your dream self. And just overall, I want you to do something every single day that your future self will thank you for. Do something every single day that's getting you at least one baby step closer to where you want to be. Again, Rome was not built in a day. Rome was not built in a day. So even if you are going on a little walk around your neighborhood, that's getting you one step closer to your dream body. Even if I'm posting one TikTok a night because I want my social media to take off, I never know which one's going to blow up, you know? Do just a little thing each day that your future self will thank you for and I promise those little things are going to add up and you never know which one's going to be the make or break. You never know which one's going to be your big break moment. You know what I mean? Like stay to it, keep up with your habits because I promise, promise, promise they will all pay off. I think I'm going to wrap up today's episode here. I love doing these self-care like glow up episodes for you guys. I have a lot to say so let me know if you have any other specific episode ideas that you guys would like to hear. I have the hot and unbothered group chat over on my Instagram at Brianna Gomez with two B's. I'll have that linked for you guys. Um, follow me on all my socials, Brianna Gomez with two B's. Add me on Snapchat and add at Hot Unbothered on TikTok and Instagram. Don't forget to check out my set, guys. I am so excited. If these do well, maybe we'll come out with other colors. And I'm also planning on hopefully, if this does well, I want to do like a denim mini dress design. I think that'd be really cute. So definitely, if you guys are liking it, we'll add to the collection. But yeah, everything for a limited time is going to be 10% off if you buy both pieces again all size inclusive all made by hand sustainably made to order with love that opportunity again i seriously am so thankful to be able to share it with you guys i think that's so exciting and more to come soon my birthday is coming up 22 i want to do something special don't forget to leave a podcast review on this episode for the chance to be featured in next week's and i love you guys so so much i'll see you next free day bye Mwah.